good morning. C can you, is this microphone yet? Thank you, thank you. First of all, thank you very much uh, for the introduction, for the invitation. Thank you, Anissa, for the invitation. Uh, it's not my first uh, visit to Riga, but this is the first Riga I came actually in springtime and not the winter. So it's a wonderful experience and to have the, uh, the very generous hospitality yesterday, I think was, was another wonderful thing. This goes forward, this goes back. Okay. Is it on? Yeah. Oh, warming up, yeah. Um, I will talk to you about the um, the international dimension of consumer protection law. Uh, it is a uh, rare animal because, unlike, for example, international trade law or to some extent, competition law, uh, consumer protection law has not taken the same speed of development as uh, other areas of uh, international law. But it is very interesting to, uh, uh, to look at the origin and, and the work that has been developed in there. And, and uh, most of the work, of course, e one can consider to some extent all the presentation we heard today by EU, uh, uh, standard and approach and directive as some form of international law because after all it involved 28 countries but if we're talking at the global level uh, clearly uh, what the only work that has been done was at the level of United Nations and the sources uh, the approaches uh, the rationale is, is quite different from what we have seen uh, um, uh, recently. And I think it's important to pay attention to that. Uh, very briefly, that work started in the early 70s, um, culminated in the adoption of uh, the first code in 1985. And between 1985 and uh, 2010, uh, no work was done on updating this work until 2015. And that's basically what I would be uh, talking about today. <coughs> Is this this? No. This. Mm -hmm. so maybe the batteries. I don't know. So I'll just, otherwise I can go there. Uh -huh. So. Yeah, yeah, it's working now. So the, this is what I would like to go through with you. First, say a background to the development of principles. I will look at the concepts and um, and the, the uh, context in which this was developed, the different approaches, and you will see that I think the the political and the development dimension is very very important elements here, and that is perhaps the link with the uh, fundamental human rights aspect of uh, uh, consumer protection. Then we'll go through the scope and principles uh, as well as guidelines, the, the last revisions, and uh, the way forward from this. First, I think it's worthwhile to recall that um, the, the first this work began in 1970s and the EU United Nations Economic and uh, uh, Social Council, ECOSOC, where the, the first attempt was to say, well, um, we need to know what were the um, the, whether this question of consumer protection is something of relevant, but it in the context of the, the development dimension. Now, if we flip back in 1970s, we have to remember there were no PCs, there were no mobile phones, there was no internet, um, they, there were fewer countries, members of the United Nations, many were still colonies, and the, the early 70s, three years later, I remember the... Uh, um, uh, petrol OPEC embargo and the call for a new international economic order. So th that economic context in which many developing countries were asking for new international economic relations, um, uh, the Commission, High Commission at the time of Human Rights, was also for self-determination, for the right to economic development. So you will see that some of the principles that we will look at uh, actually originate from the economic, the human right, the Economic Human Rights Commission work on this. And some of the language and the principles uh, uh, actually is a, is a transcription of this principle uh, to uh, uh, consumer uh, uh, protections. So although the work started in, in the early 70s, it wasn't until uh, 1980 when the first uh, draft was uh, reported, secretary was prepared, 
and <laughs> the uh, set of uh, guidelines based on high-level principle were adopted um, in April uh, 1985. Um, the economic rationales, um, again here, within the same principles of economic development and the right to development, was based on the inequality of bargaining powers, um, which itself, of course, is a result of market failure. And this is something that we discussed a little bit earlier, I think when the presentation on financial services and we had a breakfast, that underlying the uh, the, 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 the doctrine of which approach to consumer protection you have on one hand, those who believe markets are perfect, all consumer need is sufficient and timely information, and those who think no, markets failure because of asymmetric information in certain se sectors, for example finance or architecture, would require more regulations. One extreme version of that is you need a policewoman behind every consumer, even to cross the road. And in a spectrum of all this, there are a number of regulations. So this unequal bargaining power, I think it's something that has been one of the rationale and was also part of the work of the, the commission in the early, if you look at the early program of the commission, the bargaining power was uh, one of the major considerations. Of course, the other was to link European citizen to the European project by bringing consumer at the center of, uh, of the discussion there. So regulation, therefore becomes the uh, uh, as a result of market uh, failure. Uh, but those are both, I would say, there's, there's the economic, the, but there's also the political dimension. Um, and the, the political dimension is, at least within the United Nations, was how to link the uh, call for a new international economic orders to the development dimensions. Now, the development dimension meaning that many of the newly independent countries were poor, uh, faced problems of malnutrition, of poverty, and many other aspects. So if the development were supposed to take place, then those would be acquired right uh, as part of the, uh, this new international uh, uh, economic uh, order. But we have also to remember that, uh, quickly reversed, that in the 1970s and early 80s, a large number of countries didn't exist. You had the uh, Warsaw Pact, you had the NATO, um, and many countries were not still uh, developed, uh, uh, yet independent. But also it means that the development paradigm was the between those who favored government intervention, government as a provider of goods and services as a driving roles, and those who thought that the market would work, uh, 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 provide a solution to development. And this clearly, this, this dichotomy, this different approach lasted, I would say, until the collapse of the Berlin Wall uh, before there was a convergence on, on this. But we need to keep that in mind because some of the language what you'll see in the guidelines would look a little bit, well, it looks outdated, but it looks also not suitable to the condition uh, that we are operating on uh, today. Another important element, I think, to keep in mind in this the, uh, rationale is that um, the so-called rational consumer is something which is assumed under the, uh, uh, the model where an individual will be uh, utility maximizing uh, given their budget constraint and resources which are available to them. But recent work, uh, at least recent to the economists and lawyers from behavioral studies that show that individuals are not rational. And, and the discussion we've heard yesterday on finance and other areas shows very clearly that individual act not in a, in a rational uh, way. The second element I think to also to keep uh, uh, for this is that the, uh, the question about uh, what is an average consumer, because all this thing we talk about, we say that the consumer, the consumer, but who is the uh, uh, average consumer? Well, I think perhaps just to refer to, uh, to ECJ, it, you could just show that the international law that has been developed in the UN, it has been heavily influenced from many sources, and we'll see what the source from, and one of the major source contributors was the uh, European Community and the European Court of, of Justice. Now here in, in, in the, uh, the ruling, for example, in Busan, well, that European private law um, says um, that there are influences of diverse factors, such as social, cultural, and linguistic factor, we should be also considered when we're talking about the average uh, uh, consumer. Um, I would also say that, uh, also it seems that there are specific group of consumer which can be targeted, 
and there must be specific weakness of that group or consumer need also to be taken into consideration. The implication for this is that you might have a law, but you might also include specific provisions for, let's say, vulnerable groups. And those vulnerable groups could be children, could be minority group, could be people who have different languages or might be targeted by uh, unscrupulous traders in, in, in the work. And therefore, the, the notion of protection uh, need to be uh, to take into account not only the average consumer, but perhaps also go beyond this. Now, what was the approach that um, the UN guideline uh, uh, also uh, took into in this process? Because we're talking about 154 countries at the time of the negotiations with different cultural diversions and so on and so forth. What is it that is it possible to, to develop as a set of guideline of consumer protection? We know that even within the EU, so a relatively smaller group, there are more difficulties. The first, I think, is a question of convergence. And here, conversion is, was the main objective for the driver. Um, and it is, uh, what, what is meant by uh, 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 convergence is not harmonization, but more developing standard concerning the both substantive doctrine and the analytical method for addressing consumer protection, the procedures which are for applying substantive the law, as well as the method of the uh, agencies which are responsible for consumer protection. So the idea is to work toward a gradual approach, accepting a set of high-level principles, and out of this high-level principle, develop a, a convergence into standards, standards about procedure, substantive law, principle, and moving to gradually toward this uh, approach. Now, of course, this convergence, as I said, does not mean this establishing identical policies or enforcement. It will be impossible by all countries. But simply uh, uh, working towards uh, uh, common uh, uh, standards. Now, the reason for this, of course, what is implied, it meant that the development of international consumer protection law will have to be evolutionary and experimental. And I, I think this is an important lesson because even from the discussion we've had before earlier on, on, for example, uh, collective redress, um, it is very difficult. I, st I would agree that certainly the EU rushed the project, but the question would it be, should there be more studies or should few countries which have more advanced institution experiment in developing standards, in developing practices, and then learning from each other's uh, and, and moving forward, uh, this is something that is being done under competition law. I mean, competition agency, you have the network of competition authority where cases are handled together and jointly and so on and so forth. Could that be, a this evolutionary approach, could that be more useful for this? So progress uh, could be very uh, useful. Now, I think the, uh, um, as you know, the from the early 60s, uh, when the, the first piece by Kennedy was, was with Rust, um, the approaches that has been developing are, are very slow. They are the result of individual experiences of enforcing the law, of identifying conflicts of rural law, uh, difficulty in transcribing uh, directive uh, of adapting international norm to national law. And this is something that had to be taken into uh, account. So what the, the, for the successful implementation of, of those, this evolutionary uh, uh, reform, I think the, 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 the standardization required two aspects. One is first continuing uh, decentralized experimentation. I think this is very important that there isn't one s law or one size fit all uh, supranational, but decentralized experimentation at the individual countries, both on substantive role, analytical procedure, and administrative technique. And the second is to identify superior or best practices. And that those best practices, perhaps, if relevant, I think I will add not only best, but also if relevant, could be applied by different uh, countries. And then the, the third stage is uh, a country's voluntary might uh, adopt these stages if they consider they are relevant to them, and perhaps maybe later submit themselves to some voluntary reviews by their peers and develop some techniques for work. And uh, this is, I think the, 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 the peer reviews among countries will be quite useful as a tool for learning and moving forward on this uh, uh, if the international consumer protection law is to develop. 
Um, now, so when the result, as a result of the, uh, when, when the new revision was put in place, and I will give detail on this, of course you had already, the law was, the, the well, high level principle uh, were adopted in 1985. We are in 2010 when the process was launched. So a lot of things, not only technology, industries, and development, and new products, new services were available, but the EU has advanced enormously. The OECD has developed uh, enormously in this work. WTO have developed also some work, regional institutions. So the question was, we need to take stock of all the work and the practices that have been done in order to see what is relevant, what are the gaps, in order to update the international uh, rules. Now, if we look at the, uh, 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 I think an important things to keep that I mentioned earlier, that there is a development dimension. And this development dimension brings them closer, as I said, to the economic rights rather than the, the standard consumer protection law that we look at. Um, the first thing is uh, em emphasis on basic needs. And this is something you don't see. You don't see in European law, you don't see in US law, you don't see in, in, uh, in other uh, uh, countries. It's much closer to the right to development, a right to self-determination and economic process. But it also includes access to information, to safety, to choice, to representation, redress, uh, consumer education, as well as health environment. And in early 17, I think it was the early time where first discussion on sustainable consumption were developed. But um, the uh, important also to see that they were adopted uh, recognizing that consumers often face imbalances in economic terms, education level, bargaining power, and bearing in mind that consumers should have uh, the right to access non-hazardous products, as well as the importance of, of promoting just, equitable, and sustainable economic and social development. So here, as you see again, the, the, the development that I mentioned, the right to economic development was a theme that ran out throughout the process of developing international uh, uh, economic uh, 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 principle for consumer protection uh, law. In, in a sense, um, we could say that those, uh, the UN, uh, for short, UNGCP, were basically as a tool for social justice and economic development. And this is something that throughout even in the 2000. 15 uh, uh, revisions. Now, just uh, for in preparing this material, a lot of, of these documents were lost. If you went back and you said which documents started the first initiative and things, so I thought it might be useful at least for some or maybe some student who might be interested in this work to at least to find that those are the original documents that, that are still on the website. Some of them are still on there. So uh, th that's those are UN uh, uh, sources. Uh, those are the other documents which were used in updating the uh, UN guidelines, which are also available on, on the website. But in addition to that, there are a number of recent academic work that has uh, a direct relevance to this work, and, and those are the sources that I, I just put there for interest. This is a uh, second. And so what, is, what does actually the UN guidelines look like? Um, it's one of these UN wide documents um, that is uh, uh, produced in the form of resolution, like all the United Nations are a resolution, it's a non binding resolution, um, which was adopted in 1985, and it has this following structure. It has uh, 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 four chapters basically, the first on the objectives, the second has a set of general principles, and then, third, uh, very short guidelines. And under the guidelines, there are the eight rights that we'll look at, and then one section on uh, international uh, cooperation. Now, very quickly, just to show you what the, the revision process before I go inside was, well, how do we do the revision? I think was the first is to start by analyzing the, this UN guideline to see what actually does it have, and wha what are the list of issues that consumer face in 21st century. It was done in starting in 2010-11. Out of this, um, a survey was sent to member states. The first reply had more than 7,500 pages of reply on what exists. I would say between US and EU, uh, more than 5,000 came just from US and EU on the replies on, on this. 
the rest of the world was relatively smaller. Now, out of this, there was a, a report or several reports by sector that uh, assessed what were the gap and whether the UN set was relevant, to what extent would use, etc. <laughs> and this would then make a proposal for the the uh, uh, the revisions. All these documents are on the website. I gave you the link, so if ever want to to look at this, I think it's uh, useful to look at that. Um, now, but in the process, of course, in, in addition to the uh, uh, material I just mentioned, there is also work that has been done by the OECD, by ISPAN, which is the International Consumer Protection Enforcement Network, the equivalent of the ICN in competition law, uh, Consumer International, uh, uh, business representative from in all organizations, right? But in addition to this, you had the OECD, which has already been working since the 80s on a number of, first on consumer credit, 1997, the principle and good practice of financial education awareness in 2005, the good practices of financial education awareness related to credit in 2009, and then the high level principle of consumer protection in 2012. So there was already an enormous amount of work that could be in, in, uh, to fill in the gap. Uh, on this, taking the, these two documents, ANCTA produced a first draft report for the work, and I go very quickly. Final report was presented uh, to a number of, of countries. Okay. Now, I think the one thing, before I get to the, the list of this, one thing you have to remember is when you have 160 countries, ranging from EU to United States to China to um, uh, Bhutan or uh, Burkina Faso, etc. The level of economic development, institution and interest, it varies enormously. And therefore, and also attitude, but I said whether you are, you see a bigger role for government, not necessarily because of ideological reason, but let's say there's no private sector. The main sp supply of goods and services are government agencies. Clearly, the guidelines will be more directed to those who provide those services uh, to citizens. And therefore, you needed to find a common denominator among all these principles that will uh, look at this. So keep keeping that in mind, I think the, the originally the objectives of the, of the, UNC, uh, of the UNGCP, um, as I said, we, I already mentioned the, the overall chapeau, but the area of work is to assist countries in maintaining uh, adequate protections, to facilitate the production and distribution patterns, which is again here, this is not why should consumer protection and how consumer protection do this, but this clearly because of those who are where the state has a, a big uh, 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 role, uh, to co encourage high level of ethical conduct uh, in, in engaging in business. Um, and those guidelines apply also uh, to business-to-consumer transactions, uh, including the provision of goods by the state-owned uh, enterprises. For example, the provision of law or electricity, even if the, the good is free of charge, those principles will also uh, apply for this. Uh, the definition of consumer uh, uh, was uh, uh, very, uh, very generic. <laughs> Uh, in terms that the, it referred to a natural person, regardless of nationality, uh, acting primarily in their own personal, family or household purpose, while recognizing member states might adopt different definitions to address specific domestic. One of the main concerns here was that often in a low-income country, let's say you have a person who, who owns a small restaurant and use that restaurant for their own families, but also sell the surplus. And the question is, does that person, is that person fall under the consumer protection law uh, or, or not? Uh, if a fisherman uh, buy, uh, let's say, a small engine or petrol and go fishing for their own family, but then they sell the product, or let's say the beta gas explode and there are injuries, who's responsible? Is, does it fall under consumer law or protection law? There was a big discussion on this because the question of low income group in a large number of developing countries is a major concern. So the question was, so a compromise which says, well, the countries might adopt different uh, definition to suit their own uh, circumstances. Okay, objectives. Principles. Uh, I think the, the question, the main driving thing behind the, the, the principle was to adopt very high level principles that would allow 
um, countries to work within this principle <coughs> and to describe them uh, or to transcribe them into their national law that will allow those countries to uh, 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 to common com denominator yet allowing countries uh, flexibility. What are these principles? Uh, government should maintain adequate infrastructure to develop and implement, meaning having institutions. You need to have an agency institution in place. Um, there are also directives that enterprises should also obey national laws um, in terms of, uh, 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 for example, if there are certain conduct or, or prescription and consumer protection, it's also directed to enterprises. But clearly, this is a wishful proposal because there isn't a way on how actually sh enterprises sh should or will be able to uh, um, uh, 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 obey and if they don't obey what should be the provision for this um, a role for bigger for social so uh, civil society including universities uh, and private sector as well is recognizing general principle now under the this first part, which was very general, was expanded in 2015 and made it more specific by drawing on the OECD work in the one that I mentioned earlier. Basically, that the princ principle will establish some kind of benchmark for good business practices um, uh, for conducting both online and offline, including e-commerce and goods and services. And what you have there is fair and equitable treatment of the consumers by business, uh, uh, commercial behavior, that was you should not subject consumer to illegal, unethical, or discriminatory or deceptive practices uh, as such. Disclosure and transparency, uh, uh, providing uh, complete information, accurate and not misleading information, regardless of the goods and service uh, on condition that are uh, provided. Uh, education and uh, awareness rising, uh, raising. Uh, and this become this one was perhaps the most difficult as you could imagine that uh, protection uh, uh, of privacy, and there were opposition from all sides. There were opposition from business, who had concern about uh, cost of doing business, but there were some countries which I don't want to name who clearly already control internet and data privacy, and thought that this will interfere with their ability to control their own citizens and etc. And we did not want to subject the, this discussion. But uh, after three years of discussion, it became very clear that uh, this is something that could fit here. Uh, F is probably one of the most important in the sense that you needed consumer uh, uh, complaint uh, and dispute uh, uh, mechanisms, uh, both at the level of business first, uh, uh, and of course, access to justice is, is, uh, is an extremely important uh, aspect. Now, under the guidelines, I think the, again here, the, the expanded uh, in uh, section um, for the, uh, under the guidelines is the addition, the link to international trade. There were a lot of concern that many, that countries might introduce um, <coughs> consumer protection as a guise to close markets by putting standards or obligations that are not legitimate, but basically to protect uh, uh, the, the, uh, their market from new uh, and free trades. So the, uh, the language added here is that due regard should be given to ensuring that the measures about consumer protection uh, should not become barrier to international uh, trade and that they are consistent with the international trade uh, 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 obligations uh, for this work. Um, national policies, I think this is something that did not exist in the first uh, provision, which was added here, that there is an obligation to uh, adopt the national consumer protection law and put an institution, and reiterated the uh, uh, eight rights, that the consumers have the right to s physical safety, have the right uh, for, uh, to protection of interests, uh, to safety, quality of consumer goods, distribution facilities, etc. Let me need to go fast. Uh, another expansion that has been also added to the 2015 is electronic commerce, uh, which was not covered, um, uh, and I think that stands for itself. Basically, drawing, as I said here, again, there was a question whether um, the, uh, the guidelines developed by the OECD should be an integral part of the uh, new guidelines. Uh, some say yes, some say no, so they will leave it to member states if they wish to, with to draw their own national 
uh, 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 e-commerce laws based on the uh, OECD. The same thing for financial uh, services, which was not included. That was also added uh, um, in, in the, the scope. And of course, the, uh, 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 the uh, criteria was to establish consumer protection regulatory enforcement policy, oversight, appropriate control, improved financial education, fair treatment, uh, etc. And to go to uh, to this, you know. Um, then, as part of the starting point that I mentioned that the, the consumer protection is has this theme crossing through um, this area which was other issues uh, not to take too long negotiations as well for example the question of access to water to electricity to medicine um, uh, to a healthy environment it's something which is more of the environment development dimension uh, and sustainability in the environment we look at rather than specific area of work. So the, it was grouped as one area which the principal would recommend for member states to take this in, into account without entering into uh, specific uh, recommendations. The new area that was expanded, I think, is international cooperation. And this, of course, built on the first paragraph that I mentioned to you, that if you have to, if we are to develop a an effective international consumer protection law and we will work toward convergence and we said that convergence required gradual development of best practices standardization and so on and so forth then we need international cooperation and international cooperation will require exchange of information uh, pro uh, cooperation in the prevention and detection of fraud and unsafe uh, product exchange of information on banned withdrawn product uh, etc cooperating in sustainable consumption exchange of capacity building all those areas need to be done now of course the uh, you need a tool you need a, a mode of delivery for this international uh, capacity so one of the uh, recommendation of the of the guidelines was to set up this intergovernmental expert on uh, 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 consumer protection uh, law group, um, which was uh, set up as part of the guideline. And its mandate was to provide the forum and modality for consultations on member states to undertake studies on and research on consumer protection. And I think this was probably the most important part that to conduct voluntary peer reviews in order to ensure that the principles that have been adopted voluntarily by states, whether countries are actually translating these into their national uh, laws, collect data and information, and provide capacity buildings. Consider other studies, may make a uh, report, reports, and, uh, and of course, um, the, the idea is since you know, the review, one of the problems from the last review was that the, um, it took too long <coughs> for 25 years and it got became outdated. The reason why it became outdated is because there was no intergovernmental forum in which you could negotiate and discuss and update it. So now that the forum is being done, we the question was don't limit yourself to simply reviewing what you've done, but you might also want to review the scope of the law, delete some part and see whether it's relevant and review it and therefore uh, it should uh, conduct this periodic review of the mandate of the work program on it. Now, it's very important, again, as part of international cooperation, that there is another element which is extremely difficult. If you have dispute with member state, how are you going to resolve these disputes? So, and this reason out a lot, that uh, if, if it's originating from EU, but it's affecting... Uh, uh, on China, or it originates in China and affecting Australia, or it originates in Australia and affecting Japan, how would you address this? And this, of course, there is not uh, any solution to this at the moment, but what member states wanted to do is make sure that this intergovernmental group of experts does not become a supranational body that will take decision. So in the last closing paragraph, say, in performance of its function, neither the intergovernmental group or its subsidiary organ shall pass judgment on the activity or, or conduct of individual members or individual enterprises in connection with specific business transaction. The intergovernmental group or its organ shall avoid becoming involved when enterprises to a specific business structures are in dispute. So you see this takes all that function as a, a mediator or a judge 
of this work, which I think was important. One important thing to perhaps to say is on, on implementation, and I have the last slide to close, is that it's interesting that the first 25 years was very slow progress, but within, uh, this was in 2005, uh, 15, which was like one year after the new revised guideline was adopted, the ASEAN countries the developed the ASEAN Strategic Action Plan for Consumer Protection for 10 years, 2016, 2015. Similar to the EU, because the objective is integration of rival markets, and adopted the UN guidelines in their own work programs. So I think this, and that includes 10 countries from Singapore to Philippines to Vietnam to Myanmar to Malaysia, etc. So I think that it shows that there is some willingness to move forward on uh, consumer protection and to provide some development on this. The, uh, just to quote, for example, the first goal of the ASEAN of this 10 year strategy that I already started a common ASEAN consumer protection framework, uh, which means that um, countries which have law or don't have law will need to revise or update their laws toward this common standard has been developed as outlined in, in the UN set. And I think this is something that perhaps is, is, uh, uh, is encouraging that things are moving forward. The second, as I said, the, uh, the intergovernmental group, and I, I looked at the website, their meeting is next week, uh, no, not next week, uh, in July, first week of July and the 11th of, uh, of July, I see that there is the first peer review of consumer protection of Morocco, which is scheduled uh, 9 and 10th of July 2018 for, for this. So it, unlike what has happened in the past where consumer protection was relegated simply as you put it on a statute and you forget it, it seems to be that there is a more commitment and more engagement uh, on member states to take this uh, 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 standard at the international level and cooperate at the international level. And that is my last slide. I hope I didn't exceed the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.